why I'm not an Arminian. Um, I respect Arminians and I am uh, persuaded in a lot of ways by their biblical arguments, especially uh, concerning some points, but there's certain things that are hurdles that I cannot overcome. And I'm just gonna talk about two of them right now. And there's my dog. That is um, Ollie, named after, uh, uh, who's he named after? Oliver Queen. Oliver Queen, <laughs> the Green Arrow. Um, but uh, there are two things that make me not an Arminian, primarily, not everything, but just the primary things. Number one is Romans chapter nine. Now you knew that was coming. I'm not gonna give you my interpretation of Romans nine other than to say that the objector in Romans chapter nine convinces me that God is sovereign over our understanding of salvation. And the objector convinces me because the objector is objecting just the way I would be if I was interpreting it in an Arminian way and being confused by the Calvinist understanding that Paul seems to be giving or interpreting life in an Arminian way. That's number one. But number two, I think is um, maybe even more important because it has more to do with logic and a hurdle I can't overcome logically. And that has to do with the idea of, um, of libertarian freedom. Libertarian freedom is a doctrine within Arminianism that demands that that whenever we make a choice, that God comes into our life, get, we're, we're all totally depraved, even the Arminian believes that, but God comes into our life and gives us what's called provenient grace, and that that neutralizes in some way our, our, um, uh, our antagonism towards God and gives us the ability to make a true free will decision. Now, all that's fine and good and nice, but until you begin to think about it and you try to think, what does it mean to be neutralized? If you have a scale and on that scale you have a weight that is going down this direction, you know, there's the two weights and one goes down here because it's weighted in favor of our antagonism towards God, and then you balance the scales, don't balance it in the sense of accepting God, but in the sense of now you can kind of make a Garden of Eden type decision to where no sin is affecting your decision. And the problem with that is, is that you don't have anything making the decision. If you have a balance, if there's, if there's no reason for you to choose one way or the other, if there's no compelling thing within your nature or from the outside or from wherever else, then it's not true freedom. And then if there's nothing compelling you one direction or another, it's either number one, an arbitrary decision, or number two, it is a um, decision that is um, not compelled by, well, well it's really just a, a, a flip of the coin. It's uh, arbitrary or uncompelled, it's not you. And so if it's not you making the decision, then who is making the decision? What is making the decision? You have to have some type of compelling factor for you to make the decision toward God. And that compelling factor in the Calvinistic viewpoint is, is God himself coming into your life and, and, uh, and revealing himself to you, showing his beauty to you, and you're compelled to love him because you have seen his beauty. And so he is, he is the ultimate persuader. And in Arminianism, you have no ultimate persuader. You just have balanced scales, probably for eternal. You, you'd never make a decision. A dog who doesn't care which uh, bowl that he eats from, doesn't like one food or another better, then, uh, then his decision is either arbitrary or it's just by, it's uh, uncompelled and it's not even himself making it. So anyway, me and Ollie say goodbye. Thanks for listening.